everyone, this is Daniel with White Rock Coffee, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to brew our newest Thanksgiving roast coffee. This roast comes to us from our friends at Coffee Net out of Columbia. We've been buying uh, some fantastic coffees from them for a few years now. We got a hold of this one after a bunch of trial and error all throughout the summer, tasting many different coffees for our Thanksgiving roast. So many great ones came across our table, but they just didn't have that combination of warm fall flavors that we know we wanted to bring every year to our Thanksgiving coffee. So this coffee specifically comes from San Vicente in the Huila region of Colombia. It's produced by uh, smallholders who are members of a cooperative known as OC Cafe. So thank you so much to them and thank you so much for, to Coffee Net for producing one of our favorite, or at least my favorite, coffees on our menu out of this year. The brewer that we're going to use today for our guide is going to be the Kalita Brewer. You can replicate this on any pour over at home if you have a V60 or a Chemex, any sort of pour over system at home. But if it's a cone shape, you might want to use just a slightly coarser grind than we use in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started with our coffee. For our recipe today, we're going to dose out 20 grams of this coffee. Go right into here. Poured more than 20 grams on axis. <laughs> Once we have our 20 grams of coffee, we're gonna make sure and go ahead and set our kettles to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, just a few degrees below boiling for this. This is, a, this is a medium roast coffee. So we wanna make sure not to use water that's too hot or too cold either for to get a nice extraction out of this. We're gonna go ahead and start with, uh, with pre-wetting our kettle. Wanna get any uh, papery taste from our filter out of there, stick the filter in place using the hot water, preheat our vessels themselves so we draw away less heat from our coffee while we're, while we're brewing it, that's gonna make it taste a whole lot better. Let's go ahead and grind and move on to the next step. Now that we've got our ground coffee here, for this specific recipe we're using today, we're using about a medium grind size just on the coarse edge of that right in the middle of, your, of the dial of your grinder at home, but just a smidgen on the coarse side. And that's because we're using a medium roast. We wanna use a little bit coarser of a grind. This brewer is gonna go really fast as well. But if you're unsure about the grind size at home, we're looking to target just under a three minute, 30 second brew time. So somewhere around 315, 320, somewhere around there. So you can use that as a guide to dial in grind size with. But before we start brewing our coffee today, just to go over all of the parts of the recipe that we're going to be using, we're going to use 20 grams of coffee. We're going to use about 320 grams of water set to about 200 degrees. That's going to be about a one to 16 ratio. We're going to start off by pouring our 20 grams of coffee directly into our brewer like this. If it's mounted or kind of lodged on one side on the inside, you can go ahead and take your brewer and just shake it a little bit just to level out and make the bed of coffee nice and flat. Then. With everything zeroed out on our scales, we're gonna go ahead and start the timer, and we're gonna pour 60 grams of coffee for our blooming stage here. And we're going to let that bloom for about 50 seconds. Now the blooming stage is gonna be really important for this coffee because as a medium roast, it's gonna have a little bit more CO2 in the coffee than you might be used to. So we need to make sure to bloom that for a good amount of time, especially if you're getting this coffee very fresh within the next few weeks. As we release it, you wanna make sure that you get rid of a lot of that CO2 up front. It's gonna provide less problems for your brew while you're brewing it, and you're gonna have less of a bitter taste overall on the edge of your coffee. Once we're at about 50 seconds for our bloom time here, then we're gonna go ahead and start our pulses. So we're going to do four different pours during this brew. They're going to be 65 grams of water each. So I'm going from my bloom and I'm pouring 65 more grams of water here. And then once I've done so, that's not going to be that much water that you pour on top of the ground. So you're gonna see the level of the water rise above the grounds, and then you're gonna see it descend back down really quickly. So if you wanna pulse your brew around every 20 to 30 seconds or so, that should be enough time for the water level to descend back down. You can also eyeball it a little bit. If you see the water level start to get low enough to where you can see the grounds below, add another 65 grams on top of that and you're going to do that four times in total for this brew, and that's gonna take us to that 320 gram uh, yield. 
This recipe gets us to about a 1.4 like TDS. It gives pretty good body, pretty good extraction overall. Okay, and we're adding our final 65 gram pour right here. And that's going to take us to 320 grams of water in our brew. Now we're just going to wait for that to draw down. Now this recipe is really focused on getting a lot of that dense sweetness out of this coffee. This coffee is very chocolatey, um, very uh, kind of a deep caramelization flavor going on that we tasted in all of our uh, checking for this coffee behind the scenes. So this brew is really meant to emphasize some of those denser sugary components that come out in this coffee. So we're doing that many pulses in order to accentuate that as much as possible. And our brew is finishing up here right at around three minutes, 15 seconds. So somewhere in that range up to about three minutes, 30 seconds, that's what you're looking to target at home. Now that our coffee is done brewing, you're ready to serve up. Now, with this coffee, <clears throat> um, we really wanted to incorporate as much of that sense of fall as possible. We didn't want to just find any old great coffee to put on as the Thanksgiving roast for this year. We really wanted one that um, had all of the attributes that we were looking for. Something really sugary sweet, something spicy, something warm that you can have a get together and really feel like you're in the moment with this kind of coffee. And we think that this accentuates that perfectly. Mm. Lots of chocolate, lots of chocolate in there. Deep, more refined characters on the end, a little bit of a more caramelized, a toasty kind of cocoa note there on the end. And in the beginning, just a hint of orange right there, just for some complexity. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me for our brew guide today. Hopefully you're gonna make some amazing stellar cups of this at home. Remember, for this holiday season, if you're just trying White Rock Coffee for the first time, we've got a new subscription page that you should check out. It's super easy. You can go on our website and purchase coffee from there from selecting any of our roast level on recurring shipments for you. So if you taste this Thanksgiving and you're like, oh my gosh, I need this even more often, we can make that easy for you to do. We also have new classes up on our website. So if you wanna come in for a class with me and our team, learn how to brew effectively, pour latte art, make great espresso at home, home roast even perhaps, you can do that on our website at wrcoffee.com. Thanks so much to all of our customers for, for buying coffee from us and joining me for this brew guide and have a fantastic Thanksgiving. We're good. <laughs> oh, what did it do? Did it I make a move that made it shift? Happens.